If you're going to Europe for the first time, these are the five things you need to know to help you have an easier transition, just to prepare and not go into like shock, like, whoa, okay? <laughs> so guys, uh, make sure you watch until the end of the video because these are the five things I picked up after traveling to about 11 countries and spending lots of time in Europe. And guys, these are totally generalizations. Uh, again, they're, they're what I picked up after going to all these countries. Every single city you go to uh, will be different. So just keep that in mind. But let's just jump right in. So the first thing you have to prepare for, especially as an American, actually this video is geared more towards Americans because we are kind of like doing our own thing in America. The first thing you have to prepare for is that in Europe, things are not as super sized or have like a, to a whole bunch of products and just a lot like they are in America. And I'm not just talking about food guys, but let's talk about food first. Portions tend to be smaller or if the portions are large, they're meant to share with like mul multiple people. Serving sizes are just not as large when you're buying stuff like pre-packaged pre things. They aren't like in big, large bags, like family size bags you're not gonna find that you're not gonna find that unless you find some like american um chain store like a grocery store but again portions are just smaller but let's talk about other things that are not super sized okay um the plane the plane seats they are not they're meant for european sized people not us plus size americans okay and I'm not trying to scare any plus size people because I fit in them just fine, but they are smaller. Even the elevators, if like a lot of you are planning on going to France, I noticed that a lot of elevators in the apartment buildings are pretty small. I honestly feel like a lot of Parisians use the stairs because I just cannot imagine this tiny elevator literally can fit like three people uh, squeezed in together it's meant for people to use on a daily basis. Like, I, I honestly don't think so. I never actually spoke to a French person about why the elevators are so small. So if you're a French person or you know someone that lives in Paris, please comment in the description why the heck those elevators are so small. When I'm there, in, when I'm in Paris, I literally just use the elevator to um, take my lug luggage upstairs. And maybe that that's what it's meant for. Just, to, just when you need it, when you have lots of items. But I said all that to say um, that not only the food, food portions are smaller, but everything else is just, it's just smaller. They're not super sized like in America. So just prepare for that when you first travel to Europe. Again, I noticed that in many of the countries I went to from Croatia to France. Okay guys, so the next thing that you have to prepare for is like, uh, just understanding that a lot of elements of the American lifestyle, people are not familiar with it. People don't know what the heck we're talking about and they're kind of looking looking at us like we're crazy. Let me get into it. I find that a lot of American people, when I'm abroad, I find that a lot of American people, and I do this myself, I just assume that people I'm talking to in Europe like know everything that's going on in America or or understand like the experiences we have. I'm not talking about something small or like a famous bakery in Brooklyn. I'm talking about like simple things like popular movies or slangs or just whatever things Americans talk about. Again, this is a generalization that every European will not know certain things, but Generally speaking, they, they're focused on their own thing in Europe. That's what I'm trying to say. They're focused on their own thing, their own slangs, their own popular songs, celebrities. We do have an overlap, of course. But my whole point is that don't just assume that the people you're talking to is going to know what the heck you're talking about, okay? Like I said, they have their own thing going on. I hope that makes sense. But the next thing is under like American lifestyle is our like fast-paced um, on the go lifestyle, like the hustle culture. A lot of people are not living like that. A lot of cultures in Europe do value like a slower lifestyle. I feel like in America it's like hustle, hustle, on the go. What are you working on next? Never take a day off. I don't know if that's just me as a New Yorker, but I do find this uh, to be true in America. Comment in the description, let me know. So that's not it's so that hustle culture you're not gonna find that a lot the next thing to not expect which 
like follow, follows up with like the hustle culture in America. It's like the quick, fast, like service, like the microwave service. Like that's such an American thing. I find that in Europe it's more people are, people are working and living their lives. But like, for example, when you're in France, you see some people, they just go to the cafe just to sit and have one cup of coffee and they're staring in space. I'm like, what the hell are you thinking about? But they're just sitting there enjoying their day. Um, I'm not saying at all that France doesn't also have a hustle culture, but they definitely have a slower lifestyle than American people, like period. So guys, when you're in Europe, just be open to their lifestyle and how they, they do things and just take a pause on our American way of doing it. Sit down in a cafe, have a tiny cup of coffee <laughs> and go people watching and just have a slow day. Just do it like the Europeans do. Okay, so the next thing that you have to prepare for when going to Europe is that you're not gonna find a lot of things that, that you find in the US. The number one thing that I have a problem of finding when I'm in Europe is uh, tampons. So this is very country specific, but I find that tampons are kind of hard to find like in a lot of countries. Um, I guess a lot of women, even in Japan actually, I, I guess a lot of women around the world um, don't use tampons, but that's something that I found. Some of the things that we use, we're used to here in America, products and such, it's, it's sometimes difficult to find in many of the European countries. So this is of course um, country specific. So wherever you're going, uh, just do a quick quick um, Google search or you find a YouTube video on things to pack for that country. I've done two videos on that for Croatia and France. Uh, and there were just some things that were, that were difficult to find in those two countries. Okay, and next, uh, the next thing that you have to prepare for is uh, stairs you are going to get stares, especially if you're per a person of color, especially if you're, you look different, like you're overweight or whatever. You look different, you're not like a white male because a lot of the travelers are like white males, uh, white females. Uh. If you look different, you're gonna get stares. Uh. I wouldn't take it personally, I get stares all over the world from Japan to Sri Lanka, to Poland, to Croatia, wherever I get stares. You just get used to it, but um, just prepare for those stairs, okay? And for some reason, us Americans, people pick up on the fact that we're Americans. I don't know, I don't know how they pick up on it, but um, they pick up that you're Americans and you probably even get more stares, especially if you are a black American, because in some countries, uh, we are just unicorn, the unicorn travelers, okay? So, Prepare for those stairs because chances are you're gonna get it. So guys, in the last video, I showed you how to plan a multi-city trip in Europe. If you wanna go city hopping, country hopping in Europe, be sure to check out that video. I'll link that above and below. It's a step-by-step -step guide to help you plan this trip. I'll see you guys in the next video.